Welcome back to Let's Play Baltimore. Whew, been a while. It has been probably like over a year since it's... we all decided to sit down and record ourselves playing video games. Wow. This what is, a world. <laughs> this is something that we just uh, did for fun because some of us like watching Let's Plays on YouTube and we all like uh, sitting on a couch and trying to be funny and pretend like people are listening. Exactly. <laughs> So, uh, once again, I am Alex. I'm sitting on the right side of the couch here. Uh, I am Matt. I'm on the opposite stereo side here. And I'm Andy, and I'm in the center. Yeah. So, Andy is the one playing Metroid Prime right now. We're restarting a year-old save file of Metroid Prime. <laughs> <laughs> As one does, because, you know, there's no way you'll get lost or anything. Uh, Not a Metroid game, no. <laughs> no, definitely. And, uh, plus, Andy has never played a Metroid game in his life. I have so. never nunchucked before, so... Yeah, he's never even used a Wii nunchuck. So uh, this yeah, is good. this is the perfect introduction because it's a great way to get yourself acclimated. Plus, skipping the tutorial just skips a lot of unnecessary harshness that you'll experience in going through. You really just want to immerse yourself when you start playing. Isn't that right, boys? We don't need tutorials where we're going. Mm -hmm. So how many runic symbols have you activated in this room so far? Either one or two. I think we're at two presently. All right, good. So this is a, what we're trying to do here is find four runes on in hidden parts of this room that will unlock the door at the top. Right now there's a big poisoned tree in the middle of a poisoned pond, and we're trying to jump around the tree and avoid stepping in the poisoned water. And so the thing we learned last time, or that I learned last time, <laughs> was that you don't want to jump in the poison. <laughs> Not the best plan. Ideally, if you can avoid it. There was a, yeah, there, there was an episode, it was the episode where we got the charge beam, where, uh, Matt, I think you jokingly said, should I jump in the poison? And I, <laughs> and I jokingly said, yes, you should. And then you actually jumped in the poison, and we had to replay about 15 minutes of the game. I'm so sorry. No, that was funny. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I think uh, all sure the 12 lows. of our subscribers enjoyed it. Yeah. Too. Oh man, are we up to 12? You know, it, it, it fluctuates. Does it? It started out around 7. Uh -oh. It got up to, uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh the, the game. Foreign technology present. Oh, shit, the game is going to tell you where to go. Activate, active transport locator. Oh, shit, press 1. Oh, All right. Oh, oh whatever. Shit. It's trying to get you to go to Fender. No. No. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. If, 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 there's, if there's a transport to Fendrana Drift through Magmore Caverns... See, we remember this game. Isn't that, like, way ahead? No, no, no. No? The, the, what this means is, the only way through Magmore Caverns is with the Varia suit. And we uh, don't have the Varia suit yet. The only right. way to get the Varia suit is to beat Flagra. And the only way to get to Flagra is to scan the runes in this room. So we're actually on the right track. We hey! We're to beat the first major boss. Oh, look at us. Look at us. Yep. So not only do you get to play a Metroid game for the first time using a nunchuck for the first time, but you also get to beat the, the, the boss. You get to fight a boss. Damn right. You know what? We, we, we uh, we did flag up before and we didn't save the game. Oh no. <laughs> That's what happened. I remember there was, this now. I feel like there was a lot of that. <laughs> That's right. Ben... Ben spent like 20 minutes beating Flagra, and then he like cut the power or something. <laughs> oh, that is... wow. Alright, Andy. Uh, so this is where you came into the room. Yeah. So just carefully look around here. I, I think... I haven't gotten... seen any other than those. There's right. gotta be one on the There's slower one. level. Uh, I think that's one right there. Oh. I, I think that might just be a flag. Yeah. God damn it. Uh, all right, here's what I think you should do. Shoot those reaper vines to your right. Make them retract into the wall. There you go. You figured out the lock on target pretty good. All right, now can you jump over there? Yeah, you got this. It's a, it's a surprisingly easy thing to figure out, is it not? Uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. Cause the I, B I, and the A are the, are the weird part right mm. now. Yeah. Well, I, I know... Oh, um, do you think B should be fire and A should be jump? Yeah, it should be the opposite. Oh, uh, press 2. Oh, can you actually change it? You can change it, in fact. Uh, press... Uh, minus? Yeah, Go to controller, uh, hit A. Swap, and jump, and fire. Look at there that. There you go. And now it is correct. Yeah, that's much better. There you go. All right. Great. So uh, now the controller is tuned to Andy's precise bio frequencies. 
and we can get going here. So Andy, you're doing the right thing trying to jump up those platforms there, because the rest of the rune symbols are going to be up, up what basically amounts to stairs. This room is basically very complicated, a very complicated <laughs> room of stairs. So, oh, wait a minute. Oh, is uh, there one? Down there. Look down there at that venom weed. Shoot that venom weed. Ah. There's a symbol hiding under there. That's it. Reactivating some ten-year-old memories. <laughs> God, I do. I remember the first time playing through this game when it came out, just being so enthralled. I mean, it's still, it's it's pretty it's sick. still such a good game. Analysis suggests the presence of a rune symbol. Do you ever get closer to it? Oh, you have to shoot the venom weed and scan it more quickly. That's what you have to do. You gotta want it. <laughs> you gotta want <laughs> you it. Gotta want it. All right. Yes, you got there it. You go. Yeah. Four runic symbols must be activated. So I think that was three. That was three. Okay. Uh, so I think that the last one is closer to the top. So if you jump on that, those two. Um, well, well, I mean that happens too sometimes. <laughs> but that's okay. Oh, you can blow up those boxes for health and stuff too. Ah, uh, yes. The old, uh, the old story. One, one thing I love about these games is the lore. Because oh, yeah. uh, Andy, the the way this game was made was. Uh, I think about 30 Texans all locked themselves in a room for about three <laughs> years. And uh, they were huge fans of Metroid, and they were employed by the Japanese. And they had played the original game on the Nintendo, and the, the, the second one on the Game Boy, and the third one on the Super Nintendo. I and love Super Metroid so much. They were just enthralled by the story, and they wanted to recreate it in three dimensions. And then out comes Papa Shigeru Miyamoto, oh. the creator of Shigeru. Mario and Zelda. He did not create Metroid. I got that one already. Right. But uh, he had a few things to say about this game, which they were developing to be played from a third-person perspective, like Mario 64 or Gears mm. of War. And he said, wouldn't it be cool if you could look through Samus's visor so they had to <laughs> scrap the game as they were making it and make it first person. <laughs> oh, wow. And then on another visit, he said, wouldn't it be cool if Samus had a bug's head? <laughs> <laughs> and nobody and exactly said, no. knew what he meant because uh, Japanese uh, to English translation is very difficult. And his interpreter mistranslated them. What he actually meant to say was, what if Samus could see the world the way a fly sees the world. Um, oh. And what he, what he meant by that was, that makes what, more if you sense. Could, what if you could alternate between visors in the game to change the way you see things? Sure. I think that's probably the way. So, probably better than to have the head of a bug. <laughs> <laughs> but, what, but wouldn't you rather have the head of a bug? <laughs> so they implemented the scan functionality that way, and later on in the game, you get heat vision, or uh, yeah. target vision, and x-ray vision, too. So I feel cool. like something something got me just then. Uh, there might have been some stinkweed or something. Okay. Yeah, good old stinkweed. <laughs> uh, any runic symbols about? Wait, I look, thought I saw one kind over, of behind you. over there. Yeah, behind you on the wall. Like over. down and down. I thought I saw something. Maybe not. I thought I saw something on the wall, too. Maybe? Perhaps not. I don't know. All right, let's see if you can shoot down that venom weed and roll through it before it goes back. Now, yeah, baby. Yeah, you got it. All right. All right, this is where I thought I saw one. Like, right... Somewhere huh. here. here. Somewhere. All right, well, keep, keep hopping around. Because I think I remember finding it in a place that was, like, really just made me want to slap myself in the face. Because <laughs> it really should be obvious, and it's not. Oh, the old hallmark of a Metroidvania game. Yep. Yeah, did you know, Andy, that they named a whole genre of games after this one and uh, and Castlevania? Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They call them Metroidvania games, so like relatively open world, like just there? explore them ups. Up there? Uh, if, if it's not telling you, you can. I mean, that's pretty far. Oh, there's, there's what is right that? There. What is that? Can you scan it? Walls oh. appear to have been constructed with extreme delicacy around tree limbs. All right, that's just a bit of lore. There's uh, nothing really to be done, I don't think. Let's see if you can jump up a little higher and examine the world for some more runic symbols. You know a game uh, I'm ashamed to say I've never played? What's that? Is Fusion. Metroid Fusion? I never played Metroid Fusion. I played it for a little bit. I, I, I borrowed, uh, I borrowed a friend Alex's copy. You got some scan data. What did you think? Fluid patterns analyzed. 
main source of toxins and rooms detected. It's gonna be that boss yeah. room. Yep. All right. So what's what's poisoning the water? Let's find out. Tension's coming. It's in the sun chamber. <laughs> It's All the right. giant circle room. <laughs> we need to find out what lies in the giant circle room on the next episode of Let's Play Baltimore. <laughs> so until then, everyone, good night and good luck. Whatever it is we say. <laughs> yeah, what do we say? <laughs> <laughs>